When major events happen, Canadians turn to CBC News, the source Canadians trust. CBC News, The National, tonight at 10. This is CBC News Today, and this is the search for clues in this shattered wreck of a cargo plane in the woods near the Halifax airport. Seven people died in the crash, and investigators want to find the key clue, the black boxes. Hello, I'm Nancy Wilson. We'll also look at a controversial step the Ontario government took today. It's planning to ban the sale of pit bulls after a series of vicious attacks and a public outcry. It's the first province to ban the dogs. But pit bull owners say it is cruel and unnecessary. But we begin in Halifax, where investigators are going through the crumpled pieces of a 747 today. They're trying to find out why the cargo plane crashed yesterday, killing everyone on board. The CBC's Rob Gordon was at a briefing earlier today, and he described what officials had to say. Well, the investigators are trying to picture or paint a picture of what happened in the final moments uh, as the 747 moved down the runway here in Halifax. Now, what they do know at this point, what they said this morning, uh, was that the aircraft's tail hit the runway three times uh, and at one point uh, at the very end, uh, the third time, broke off and then the aircraft continued to move along, perhaps airborne, slightly airborne, until it hit a berm, man-made hill at the end of the runway and then it careened off into the woods. So investigators have, uh, have said that this is what happened. Uh, they're now looking for other information, other sources of information, eyewitnesses, uh, the load logs to see what was on the aircraft and how it was loaded. They're also looking for the black boxes, the data recorder to find out uh, how the systems aboard the aircraft were behaving, and also the flight recorder to find out uh, what the pilots were saying to themselves and to the control tower here in Halifax. Now, here's what one of the investigators had to say about how the investigation's going. Clearly, you want to establish uh, what was the state of performance of the aircraft and uh, why, would, why was the takeoff obviously abnormal. And there are a variety of scenarios uh, that look from the aircraft loading to the aircraft performance, whether all the engines were operating uh, and, and the calculations. So they're just, we're just going to go through systematically, go through each of these elements that could potentially create a scenario such as this, and uh, we'll go where that, uh, uh, the data and the analysis leads us. Now, we know that the berm did not cause the accident, but did it make the accident worse? Would the plane have simply skidded to a stop uh, if not for the berm? Did the berm cause the plane to uh, get airborne and launch itself uh, uncontrollably uh, into the woods? And that's something the investigators uh, will be looking at. The CBC's Rob Gordon in Halifax. 34 crew members from the HMCS Chicoutimi are coming home to Canada today. They're no longer needed in the investigation into the deadly fire that broke out on their submarine. The captain and the remaining crew members will stay in Scotland, where a military board of inquiry is holding hearings. There were more questions in the House of Commons about the condition of Chicoutimi. It is one of four submarines that Canada bought from Britain. In its former life as the HMS upholder, the HMCS Chicoutimi had a lengthy history of serious electrical and water leakage problems. In fact, five times in the early 1990s, this sub was forced to limp back into port due to the very type of problem that tragically reoccurred last week. Despite knowing this and continuing its policy of chronic underfunding of our Navy, the Liberals agreed to acquire this submarine. Why? Honourable Minister of National Defence. We agreed to acquire the submarine, Mr. Speaker, precisely because the Navy was there during the very trials that the Honourable Member refers to, was familiar with the problems, had worked their way through them. The submarine has been late leaving Scotland for the very reason that our Navy spent time to make sure that it was safe for ocean passage before they left port. That's why they took the extra time. That's why they did what they did. I'm confident that they were professionally capable to do that, Mr. Speaker, and that's exactly what we asked them to do, and that's what they've delivered for the good of the Navy and for the good of the country, Mr. Speaker. The opposition says the government cut funding for the submarine retrofit program. The defence minister says that is not the case. Prime Minister Paul Martin spoke about Chicoutimi with British Prime Minister Tony Blair today. The two leaders were at a conference in Hungary. 
essentially, uh, uh, Mr. Blair um, extended his uh, condolences. Um, I uh, thanked uh, the British uh, Prime Minister for the, uh, for the, for the help, the, the, the British ships that were sent uh, when the sub uh, was, uh, was disabled. Um, I uh, pointed out uh, to, uh, to Mr. Blair that there were costs, liabilities that uh, uh, could be, uh, uh, that obviously arise uh, from this, um, but that in fact uh, we should await the results of the inquiry. Um, and he agreed uh, that, uh, that that would be the case. I also pointed out that this was not the time for intemperate or unfortunate remarks. Did you Martin was referring to comments by Blair's defense minister, Jeff Hoon. Hoon said it was up to Canada to ensure the submarines were satisfactory, and he used the words, buyer beware. An 18-month-old Alberta toddler has been found alive after going missing for almost a day. Zachary Hill disappeared from his home southwest of Edmonton. The CBC's Min Darwal is at the family's home near the town of Carnwood and joins us now. So, Min, just take us through what's happened here. Well, uh, Nancy, as you can imagine, uh, everyone here is breathing a sigh of relief uh, after young Zachary was found. Uh, it all started Thursday afternoon, uh, shortly after 5 o'clock. The youngster was in this courtyard playing with his dog. When the dog wandered away and uh, little Zachary, of course, followed him and uh, went into the, the thick brush that surrounds the home. Uh, his mom uh, came out a few minutes later, uh, looked around for the young boy, didn't see him, saw the dog was back here, um, got a little bit nervous, a little frantic, phoned the RCMP, and then, uh, of course, the search was on. And uh, last night, there were about uh, up to 25 people, search and rescue members, uh, two helicopters, one from Edmonton, uh, also the RCMP helicopter. They were out here scouring the countryside looking for the youngster, and uh, he wasn't found. So the search went on through the night, and they continued on searching up until this morning when he was found uh, shortly uh, around 10 o'clock. And where is Zachary now? Well, he was uh, found uh, actually uh, about a half a mile away from here uh, under a tree. Uh, he was a little red. Um, might have been suffering from a mild uh, hyperthermia, the RCMP told us. Uh, he was put in the helicopter, flown to Drayton Valley Hospital, which is about a half an hour drive from here. So uh, they're going to keep him uh, overnight to just make sure that uh, he turns out to be okay. Very good news indeed. Min, thanks for the update. The CBC's Min Darwal near Carnwood, Alberta. Ontario is cracking down on pit bulls and their owners. The province is introducing new legislation to ban people from buying or breeding the dogs. People who already have pit bulls would be allowed to keep their pets, but they would have to keep them leashed and muzzled in public. And have the animals spayed or neutered. I am convinced that pit bulls are ticking time bombs. I am convinced that they are inherently dangerous animals. How many miles of stitches and staples are we going to have to expand? How many limbs are going to have to be severed before we do something about these dogs? Enough is enough. We cannot have these animals walking the streets, the fields, or the family rooms of Ontario. The new law also includes higher fines and jail time for pit bull owners if their dog hurts someone. Ontario is the first province to introduce a ban on pit bulls in Canada. Hundreds of people gathered at a church in Yellowknife to remember Louise Pargader. She is the parole officer found dead last week in an apartment belonging to one of her parolees. He has since been charged with first-degree murder. Friends and family came together last night to say goodbye. Many are demanding answers from Corrections Canada. In 2001, Pargeter recommended that parole be revoked from the man accused of killing her. He was sent back to jail for two years and then released in June of this year. Israel says it's easing its offensive at a refugee camp in Gaza after weeks of fighting that killed more than 100 Palestinians. CBC News Today will have that story when we return. They got a body, they got a stretcher. A new political thriller. From now on, I call the shots. H2O, starting Sunday, October 31st on CBC. Introducing the Acura RL. With voice activated technology, 300 horsepower, and the world's most advanced all wheel drive. 
it shifts power to exactly where you need it for magnetic-like handling. The road will never be the same. The all-new Acura RL. Our meetings run late, faxes, fax, new offers. I go through the paces. In my wallet is my family. I leave. Already 25 years. Feels like yesterday. I rush places. Time swings on ahead. My daughter grows up light as air. I wish I could always be there. Good to see you, Dad. Travel is the love between spaces. Aeroplan. Miles. Possibilities. Wow, $8.99 for this butter soft leather sofa. But at United Furniture Warehouse, it's a low-cost warehouse operation with no commission sales staff, no frills, and no gimmicks. $6.99. Wow. United Furniture Warehouse. Alberta's own Cash and Cars Lottery is back with a 1 in 15 chance to win. Grand prizes include $1 million, his and hers BMWs, and his and hers Jaguars, plus the early bird prize of $100,000, a total of over $4.4 million in prizes. Your ticket will mean big-time help for thousands of Albertans living with cancer, giving hope through research and prevention. Hurry, only five days left till early bird. Here's our jingle for goldfish. Yes, bacon, not fried goldfish. The yummy snack that smiles back until you bite their heads off. Now see the fishes swimming. Oh, look, the winner's grinning. And with no trans fat, you'll be grinning too. You know they're made with real cheese, even though they look like fishies. The snack that smiles back, goldfish. And for taste buds that are braver, we blasted them with flavor. Try flavor blasted goldfish. Just in time for family get-togethers, United Furniture Warehouse has made special hot buys on beautiful dining rooms. Get this dinette set, all seven pieces, only $3.99. Wow! United Furniture Warehouse. The greatest Canadian. How do you measure greatness? He embodies the greatest Canadian values. Drive, intelligence, charm, passion, genius, a visionary. Without a doubt, he loves Canada. His ideas are as broad as the planet. These are all the result of one man. The debate begins as each advocate makes a case for one of the top ten nominees, The Greatest Canadian. Series starts Sunday, October 17th on CBC Television. Come on tour with me, and I'll show you who The Greatest Canadian is. To Zimbabwe now, where a court verdict today is being called a political victory. The country's opposition leader has been acquitted of plotting to assassinate President Robert Mugabe. Warden Changarai left the courthouse surrounded by jubilant supporters. The case involved testimony from a political consultant based in Canada. He testified that Changarai had asked him to arrange the assassination. Changarai says he is surprised by today's verdict. What a relief. Yeah. Uh, I think it was unexpected because of the political environment in which we operate, but we cannot celebrate yet. Changarai says he is hopeful his acquittal will provide a basis for reconciliation in Zimbabwe. He still faces separate treason charges linked to planned protests against Mugabe in 2003. U.S. forces have renewed their attacks on the Iraqi city of Fallujah. Hospital officials say at least eight people were killed during an overnight raid. The Americans launched air and ground strikes on rebel positions. The raids follow a refusal from city representatives to hand over rebel leader Abu Musab al zakawi His group is headquartered in Fallujah. It has taken responsibility for two deadly bombings yesterday in the Baghdad area known as the Green Zone. It houses U.S., Iraqi and British officials. Israel has begun pulling troops out of a refugee camp in northern Gaza. The move comes after the largest military operation there in four years. The CBC's Margaret Evans reports from Jerusalem. The Israeli government is characterizing the scale back as a redeployment. 
Some 2,000 Israeli soldiers, backed by 200 armored vehicles and tanks, rolled into northern Gaza at the end of September. Defense officials say they'll now pull back from the sprawling Jabalia refugee camp, where much of the fighting has taken place, and from the town of Beit Lahia, which has been virtually cut off. The Israelis say they'll remain in position to move back in quickly if Palestinian militants begin firing Qassam rockets at Israel again. But Palestinians say militancy in Gaza will only grow unless people are offered some form of hope. Dozens of homes have been demolished in Gaza over the past two weeks, and more than 100 people killed, many civilians. The Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's decision to redeploy comes after an announcement that he expects the evacuation of Israel's Gaza settlements to begin next May. Yesterday, thousands of pro-settler demonstrators marched to protest Sharon's plan, but the turnout was far lower than organizers expected. A majority of Israelis want to see the Gaza settlements dismantled. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Jerusalem. Turning now to the latest business news, it's been a real puzzle how the U.S. economy can't seem to create jobs, and yet the jobless rate is a near record low. Now there's a growing theory on how that can be. Our business reporter Jeannie Lee joins us now. So it is an interesting puzzle. How are some of the financial analysts explaining this apparent conflict? By concluding, Nancy, that more Americans must be working under the table, making money but not paying taxes. That would explain how job creation is so low and yet spending is on such a high in the U.S. The latest retail sales came in twice as strong as economists had expected, the biggest jump in seven months, in fact. Analysts at Thompson First Call say that shows a livelier gray economy in which people work but aren't on anyone's books and certainly not the tax man's. And the employment firm Challenger Gray and Christmas says the Internet has created more so-called eBay entrepreneurs, adding to the issue. Part-time work, uh, of course, helps people cover high fuel costs, for example, and the U.S. Labor Department does not track people who don't pay taxes, but says Washington loses big on those unpaid taxes, about $255 million each year. Well, the recent spike in crude oil prices is so sharp, it is giving gas prices a jab. As well, wholesale gasoline prices on the market are back near their record high. So in the last few days, pump prices in many Canadian towns and cities have been edging up. In Newfoundland and Labrador, a liter of regular has been spotted at $1.01, close to last spring's levels. In late May, Canadians paid the most ever for gasoline as prices in the wholesale market hit a high. That was because inventories were super low and the gas-guzzling summer driving season was just ahead. Prices did settle back, but then came this recent spike in crude oil prices to above $54 U.S. a barrel today. Now, staying home instead of driving around won't save you much money because furnace oil prices have also been soaring to record highs. Well, it's a group of angry pensioners versus none other than the central bank over who pays to run the pension plan, the plan or the employer. The Bank of Canada set up its plan in 1936. For the next 57 years, the bank paid the administrative expenses, but that changed in 1993. The plan was running a surplus, so it began covering the costs. Pensioners figure that's their money and they're owed $12 million. And they've started a class action lawsuit demanding that money back plus another $30 million for breach of trust and contract, saying they worked their entire careers expecting the plan would be run by a certain set of rules and that the rules were not supposed to change. Well, just days after announcing 1,500 layoffs at its Canadian plants, news that Bombardier is being courted to build a new plant in the U.S., Bombardier has to make the cuts because sales have stalled for its existing regional jets. It has to decide by January if it will go ahead with a new and larger model to seat 110 to 135 people. That will cost $2 billion U.S. to develop the new project. Bombardier has said it would cover one-third of that bill with outsider suppliers paying another third and government help, hopefully, taking care of the rest. Quebec's Minister of Regional Development confirmed today that three American states in the Midwest have each offered the required amount of government help, $700 million. And he called on Ottawa to step up to keep the project and future jobs in Canada. Well, the end of September marked more than the end of bankruptcy protection for Air Canada. The airline says operating income was way up during the quarter to $235 million, 14 times the operating profit of a year earlier and getting the credit higher revenue as more travelers filled those seats 
and lower costs as the concessions made by unions and lenders kicked in. They helped make up for soaring fuel prices. CEO Robert Milton says a stronger Canadian dollar and a surcharge on international flights also helped. The results are unofficial and do not include the high cost of restructuring. Final audited numbers are due on November 15. Well, there's a growing appetite for things made in Canada. The day after another strong trade surplus report, Statistics Canada confirmed factories were busy filling orders in August. Manufacturers shipped more than $50 billion worth of goods. That's a record for the month and the ninth month in a row of gains, the longest hot run in 16 years. Shipments of big items like auto parts led the way as plants returned to full production following summer slowdowns. The Bank of Canada may use these numbers as reason to boost interest rates again. It makes that decision next Tuesday. Well, all that new stuff eventually becomes old clutter, and pack rats are going online to offload that accumulation. Several sites worldwide are now dedicated to free cycling, as in recycling, but giving away stuff for free. Here's, a, here's an example. Free stove needs a good scrubbing and three new elements. Get it off my porch, says the person posting it. And from some students setting up a lounge, a plea for furniture or anything really. There are plenty of pleas and offers, hoping people will uh, donate things as they clean up their overstuffed garages. Well, McDonald's is doing a little cleanup on its image. In Britain, where profits last year plunged by 71%, the famous golden arches have morphed into something else. A question mark in ads for the fast food chain will be run in the next two weeks. It's to make customers think twice about what McDonald's is about. Not just burgers and sugary drinks, but more and more it's about salad and water, where the happy meal is now a healthier meal. The campaign comes just after the anti-McDonald's documentary Super Size Me opened in the UK, but Nancy, McDonald's as usual, as in other markets, denied that that was why it was making these changes. Oh, just a happy coincidence, mm -hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks, Jeannie. You're welcome. Well, we want to show you quite a sight. It's nice, of course, when a parent can make room in a busy day for playtime with a kid. Well, this playtime took place in the Pacific Ocean near Australia. You're looking at a mother humpback whale and her daughter. And their playtime, as you can see, makes quite a splash. But it does look like they're having a whale of a time. CBC News Today will be back in a moment. The laughs are on us. Whatever. With Air Farce, 22 Minutes, Red Green, and Just for Laughs Gags. Tonight, starting at 8 on CBC Comedy Friday. Psych. You try to get it out of their hands, but it's much better when you don't have to try it all. Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza. More fun than food should be. Get a medium one-topping pizza for a great low price. Pizza Hut. At our place or yours. Want maximum cleaning power? Get the new Oral-B Cross-Action Power Max. It's rechargeable and won't fade like battery toothbrushes, so it's always at peak cleaning power. Keep your smile fully charged with the new Oral-B Cross-Action Power Max. Introducing the Acura RL. With voice-activated technology, 300 horsepower, and the world's most advanced all-wheel drive, it shifts power to exactly where you need it for magnetic-like handling. The road will never be the same. The all-new Acura RL. You try to get it out of their hands, but it's much better when you don't have to try it all. Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza. More fun than food should be. Get a medium one-topping pizza for a great low price. Pizza Hut. At our place or yours. Uh-oh. Time for One Second Plumber. Hold to the drain and press. One Second Plumber powers through everything. No harsh chemicals, no environmental damage. One Second Plumber keeps the drains running on time. Clarica advisor can make sense of almost anything, even proposals. Clarica, health insurance, life insurance, and investments. The incredible new Leon's Home Furnishing Superstore is now open at White Mud and 50th, and we're having a grand opening celebration. 
You'll love all our amazing sale prices, sensational no payment plans, fabulous bonus offers, immediate pickup, no extra charge delivery anywhere in Alberta, and much, much more. It's all on now in both our incredible Edmonton superstores. Get everything you want at Leon's Grand Opening Celebration today. We're turning up the heat at Swiss Chalet, because this fall, we've got some tips for rib lovers. New mesquite barbecued back rib tips. Tender, seasoned rib tips basted with our new smoky barbecue sauce and served with your favorite rotisserie chicken. So come in to Swiss Chalet and let us tip you for a change. Saturday night, Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Part of three great back-to-back -back movies on CBC's Movie Night in Canada, Saturday. Travelers heading to Toronto's Pearson International Airport should prepare for delays. Members of the Public Service Alliance are picketing there. It's one of a series of rotating strikes by federal civil servants. A similar picket line yesterday caused major disruptions at Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport in Montreal. The federal government and the union have reached tentative deals for some workers, but 90,000 employees are still without a contract. Well, a hot new movie has ignited a passion for ballroom dancing in Manitoba. Jennifer Lopez and Richard Gere filmed Shall We Dance in Winnipeg. As Barbara Brunzel reports, people in the city are kicking up their heels. Shall we dance? That's the question Winnipeggers are asking each other these days. Enrollment in ballroom classes across the city is on the rise. Demand at rec centers is up by 30%. Part of the credit goes to this. A Hollywood movie about a man who finds passion in the two-step. Shall We Dance was shot in the Prairie City in the summer of 2003, and there's been a buzz about ballroom ever since. Jennifer Lopez, Richard Gere, and Susan Sarandon were in Winnipeg for the shoot. You have to hold her like you're going to have your way with her right here on the dance floor. And if J-Lo thinks it's hip to shake it, well, that's good enough. Because we look up to people like her, you know, maybe we want to do it too, and it opens our minds to new things. Royal Winnipeg ballet dancers Johnny Wright and Sarah Murphy Dyson say ballroom has done wonders for their marriage. The tango is, is really a, you know, sexy, kind of earthy dance, so that was really fun to perform together. Um, I, I guess, if anything, it brought us even closer. The ballet stars were introduced to ballroom after being cast in Shall We Dance. Murphy Dyson even helped J-Lo perfect a few ballet moves. But it wasn't the stars that captured their hearts. It was the power of dance. And if reaction from this pre-screening of the film is any indication, no, like they won't dance, be dancing so, alone. Yeah, I just need the partner. Anybody out there? Hot, sexy, and cool. And in Winnipeg, you gotta stay hot and sexy. The film waltzes into theaters across North America this weekend. Barbara Brunzel, CBC News, Winnipeg. Recapping our top stories at this hour, investigators at the Halifax airport continue their hunt for a vital clue in a plane crash. The black boxes from a 747 cargo jet that crashed on takeoff. And Ontario becomes the first province to ban the sale of pit bulls after a series of attacks. Many pit bull owners say a ban is going too far. And in just a few minutes, CBC News World will have live coverage of a news conference in Halifax updating the investigation into yesterday's jet crash. And that's a wrap for CBC News Today. We leave you this hour with a scene you don't see every day. A cattle run through downtown Edmonton. It's part of an event called the River City Roundup, and it happened earlier today. I'm Nancy Wilson. Thanks for watching.
When major events happen, Canadians turn to CBC News, the source Canadians trust. CBC News, The National, tonight at 10.